Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. Today I have my February book haul for you and this might be my smallest book haul ever, maybe? I think I only have six books to show you, which is so small. But I have two non-bookish items I'm gonna start with. I have received from a lovely subscriber, Kim. She sent me some book sleeves and I'm gonna be doing a giveaway later this month and you may be seeing one of or two of these book sleeves in the giveaway. Of course, I'm gonna keep one for myself. But these are just so lovely. And I'm so thankful they're nice and puffy and squishy and will protect your books. Thank you so much, Kim. I can't wait to use these to give something to you guys. The other non-bookish thing I received is this bookmark and I'm gonna open it up with you. I haven't opened it yet. I won a giveaway and part of it, uh, I won an Amazon gift card as well as a customized bookmark. So of course I asked for one that said books and jams. I got to pick the colors and everything and this is like my favorite color. That's so beautiful. Let me take it out of the plastic. Oh, so sweet. I love it. Thank you so much. I don't have a lot of fancy bookmarks so it's nice to have one that has my name on it. My channel name, it's lovely. Now onto the books. This is why you're really here, right? I did take some unhaul books to a used bookstore here in Richmond where you get some credit and I used that credit to purchase these books so I didn't spend any money on these and these are the ones that I got. I recently did a video talking about authors that I own a lot of books and I haven't read them yet and I purchased another one from Sarah Addison Allen. However, this Garden Spells is the first book and I own First Frost which is the sequel to this one so it made sense to me to get the first book so I can read this one before reading First Frost. This is actually Sarah Addison Allen's debut novel as well, so I'm really glad to own this one. Her books often have a little bit of the extraordinary, a little bit of magic in them. This one, the Waverleys have always been curious family, endowed with peculiar gifts that make them outsiders even in their hometown of Bascom, North Carolina. Even their garden has a reputation, for the Waverly history is in the soil and so are their futures. That's just the beginning of the long description on the back, but I'm really excited to read some Sarah Addison Allen. I'm actually gonna start with a different one, but I'm glad that I now own this one. I picked up a book that I have read before, and Hazel Gaynor is one of the authors of Last Christmas in Paris, along with Heather Webb. I listened to this on audiobook a year ago, Christmas time and really enjoyed it. This is an epistolary novel. It is written in letter format, um, which was really interesting to listen to on audio. I think I prefer epistolary novels to be read because I feel like I get a little bit more out of them that way. However, I really did love this story. It does take place a little bit around Christmas time, but I wouldn't necessarily call this a Christmas book. It is a historical fiction set during World War II one about this girl and her brother and her brother's friend. There's some romance, there's some wartime correspondence, and I really, really loved it. I have seen this one at so many library sales and patch it um, bel canto. I've seen this one at so many library sales and never really picked it up. I'm glad I waited because this copy I have never seen before and it's gorgeous. I'm not a huge fan of the deckled edges, however. This one sounds very interesting. It is set somewhere in South America. There is this party going on where this a soprano opera singer is singing and then these terrorists barge into this party and take everybody hostage. And it just kind of takes off from there. And I think bonds are formed between the hostages, even some of the terrorists. Uh, music plays a big part of this, which is I think what finally sold me on picking this up. And I'm just really glad that I have it. So hopefully I get to this one relatively soon. <laughs> we all know how that goes. The last one that I picked up at the used bookstore using my credits is a middle grade book called The Doll Maker of Krakow, which is set during World War II and it's a middle grade book. There, it was a no brainer to grab this one. So this one, Carolina is a living doll whose king and queen in the land of dolls have been overthrown. But when a strange wind spirits her away, she soon finds herself in Krakow, Poland, in the company of the doll maker, a man with unusual power and a marked past. The doll maker has learned to keep to himself. Nazi soldiers descend on Poland, Carolina, and the doll maker quickly realize that their Jewish friends are in grave danger and they are determined to help save them no matter what the risk. So this sounds like historical fiction merges with folklore and fairy tale. That description, merging fairy tale with historical fiction, reminds me a lot of Echo. And I don't know if this will be anything like Echo, but I love that idea of 
merging the fairy tale with the real and um, in a middle grade book I think that that can work really well so hopefully I enjoy this one let's try to get to it in March we'll see I found one at a library book sale for 50 cents and that is The Secret of the Irish Castle by Santa Montefiore she is another author that I've heard such good things about and I have I think one or two other books by her on my shelves now I have three so this one does take place in 1939 in Ireland and America, I believe, and it says secrets can bring us together and tear us apart. So I am excited to give Santa Montefiore a try. I should probably read some of hers before I purchase any more. <laughs> I was sent a middle grade book to read for this month and it is Ber Boy from Berlin by Nancy McDonald. And she also signed the front of it. Da -da -da -da. Where is it? she signed it for me which is really sweet this one is historical fiction so there is some fiction there but it is based on the true story i believe of her grandfather i want to say who fled from germany from berlin at the very start of world war ii during april in april of 1938 so i'm really looking forward to reading this i love world war ii historical fiction and i love middle grade so this is a great combination of those two things thank you to iguana books for sending this my way so these are the six books. That's it for my February haul. That's amazing to me. I never have such a small haul. I'm so thrilled about all of these. I've already read one of them, which is great. And two of them are middle grade. So they are going in my stacks for this month, uh, March. And yeah, so it's super small haul, but I also have some other fun bookish goodies as well. And I would love to chat with you down in the comments. Have you read any of these? I feel like not many of them are talked about that often on good on booktube. So let me know if you've read any of these authors or any of these books. I love chatting with you down in the comments. So let's chat down there. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be talking to you in another video very soon. Bye.